Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. You ever been out trolling, wondering what lure you were going to use, why you were going to use it, what you were going to catch with it, or maybe even how to rig it? Well, in this episode, I'm going to try and answer some of those questions and clear up some of the mystery behind trolling lure selection. Before we get into this, though, if you want to learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. All right, so I want to start out by saying that this episode is going to be a comprehensive overview of the saltwater trolling lures that I use when I'm going out trolling. We're going to cover several different topics of trolling such as topwater trolling, planar trolling, and high speed trolling. I'm going to explain to you what lures I use, why I use them, how to rig them, and what I catch with them. So let's get into this. The first area of trolling we're going to go over is going to be topwater trolling. The typical lures I would use up on top over the reef, the deep edge of the reef, and out in the stream. The first lure I'm going to go over is the white bucktail jig. This particular one happens to be from the manufacturer Spro. It's my favorite manufacturer. Now I understand this is a jig, however I do troll it and I troll it a lot and I catch a lot with it. So what I do when I'm trolling white bucktail jig is it's just standard top water trolling. Get your boat up to speed. You can do around six to eight knots with it. I rig this up with about 20 pound fluorocarbon leader of about seven feet. I troll it anywhere from the deep edge of the reef, over the reef, and out deep. It catches everything from mutton snapper. Yes, when you're trolling mutton snapper, it'll catch kingfish, it'll catch bonita, Catches tuna, catches dolphin, and on a rare occasion you'll get hooked up with a sailfish on it. It's going to be a struggle to get them in, but it, you know the fun factor is heightened when you get a sailfish because you're going to be using this on light tackle. You don't need to use a Penn International 30 to troll this bad boy. You can put it on a light spinner and troll it around. And that's the white bucktail jig. Next lure I'm going to go over is a squirt squid also known as a trolling octopus. Almost everybody who trolls has these. If you don't have them, you've more than likely seen them in your fishing buddies or your friends' tackle box. These are used all over. So I use these to troll everywhere also, over the reef, the deep edge of the reef, and out in the stream, past the continental shelf. These things catch everything also. They'll catch you bonita, tuna. This is a very commonly used dolphin lure. These lures are also typically used a lot as backup lures. If nothing else is working, people will drop one of these in, give it a shot just to give it a shot and see if something out there is going to eat it. They are a very productive fish attractant. Now I use these in a couple different sizes. This is the four and a half inch one and this was a 12 inch one but I cut it down to about six to seven inches and I'll use this particular one for high speed trolling for Bonita when they're on their annual run north during the summertime. Trolling squids come in all sorts of colors. This one happens to be my favorite which is dolphin colored. Blue, chartreuse, and a little bit of silver with some glitter. They also come in pink and clear. They're iridescent. You got blues and whites. You got greens and oranges. You got purples and reds and blacks. When making your color selection for any trolling lure, you want to look at the clarity of your water. The natural thought process is to go, hey, I need a brighter colored lure in a darker colored situation. That way the fish can see it. No, no, no. Fish 
know that prey fish camouflage themselves with the color of the water. So if you've got greener water, you want to use a greener lure. If you're in a lower light level situation, you'll want to use like purples and blacks and reds. If you're in bright clear water situations, more than likely try out the brighter colors such as the pinks and the yellows and the oranges. The way I typically rig these is with a rather light rig. What I'll do is I'm going to use 40 pound monofilament leader, about six to seven feet of it. I will rig it with double 5-0 hooks in the tandem setup. Uh, I'm going to tie my hooks on with a standard clinch knot. And then at the other end where it will attach to the main line of my trolling reel, I use a barrel swivel attached with a clinch knot. A very simple setup, not much to it. And like I said, ultra effective. That's the trolling squid. The next lure I'm going to talk about is the trolling skirt. These lures are typically thought of as something that you add on top of a ballyhoo and troll. And that's just incorrect. I've been trolling these for years without anything behind them playing just like you see. And I catch more fish without a fresh piece of bait being behind it than I do with it. Trolling skirts come in all sorts of colors. This one, as you can see, is pink and white. I also have dolphin colored one, which is blue, chartreuse, and white. There's also blues and whites, reds and blacks. The color choice is endless. When selecting your color choice, you have to look at your water clarity. If you're in greener water, start out with a greener looking lure. If you're in clear water, I'd go with a brighter colored one, like a pink and a white. You're going to want to troll a trolling skirt between 8 and 10 knots. These do great hiding just underneath the surface of the water. They have a 1 ounce weight in the head, which kind of drags it down and keeps it right below. The tentacles make great smoke and flare. It's a high fish attractant and these things entice the impulse to feed a lot. These lures are what I catch most of my dolphin on. Don't get it wrong, they also catch bonita, tuna, sailfish. I've even caught wahoo on these. When I rig this up, again, it's a simple rig. It has one ounce weight in the head. It is hooked up with double tandem 5-0 hooks tied on to a clinch knot. About six to seven feet of 40 pound monofilament leader. And at the end of it, I have a simple barrel swivel tied on with a clinch knot. And that hooks onto the snap swivel of your trolling rod. Typically, I'm not going after toothy critters with these lures, which is why I have it on monofilament and a lighter monofilament strand. I'm not really thinking ever that a wahoo is going to come up and eat these. I'm typically going for dolphin when I'm trolling these. Like I said, an ultra effective fish attractant, the trolling skirt. The next lure we're going to go over is the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. This one is a four and a half inch lure and it is in the color pearl blue. It has a chrome head. This is one of my go-to lures when I start to set out trolling. Troll this lure between six and 10 knots depending upon the conditions. So typically when I start trolling, I drop out one of these. This is one of the things that fish eat more often than not. These lures catch everything. They catch kingfish, they catch bonita, they catch tuna, it'll most definitely catch dolphin. We've even caught a white marlin on this lure. Super effective. Like I said, it catches everything. The shine and the flare and the smoke that's created by the mylar strips, this lure does a lot. This lure's rigging is very basic. It's the same as most other top water lures. I have about six to seven feet of 40 pound monofilament leader. It is hooked on with double 5-0 tandem hooks, tied on by a clinch knot. And at the end is a barrel swivel, and that is also attached with a clinch knot. That hooks onto your 
snap swivel on your trolling lure for a quick release in case I want to switch up lures or go with anything else. I troll this offshore, the deep ledge of the reef and out into the stream. We're looking for pelagics. We're looking for big fish with this. The beauty of the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer is that I turn this into a compound lure also. What a compound lure is, is you take the factory lure and you add on an additive. So, behind this Mini Turbo Slammer, I have a six inch trolling squid, and that's hooked up with double 80 tandem hook setup. What it does is it gives it a larger profile as you're traveling through the water. You're going for bigger pelagic fish with this. If you're going with a lure like this, you might want to up the level of your leader size too, to maybe 60, maybe 80. If you up your leader size, you'll have to watch the knots you use or start using crimps. As a rule of thumb, once I get above 50 pound test leader, I start crimping. So at 60 pound test, I start using crimps. You can also use a trolling skirt as your second trailing lure when making this a compound lure. These are great for the bigger pelagics. Like I said, marlin will hit it. Bigger dolphin will hit it. The bigger profile makes it more of an attractant and entices that impulse to feed. And you can also boogie down. These are artificials. There's no fresh bait behind it. You can do a good 10 knots with these, no problem. It's gonna make a fish chase it down. It's not gonna give the fish any time to come up and examine what he's eating because he doesn't wanna pass up this opportunity to eat. One other thing I love to do with the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer, one of the things I have the most fun doing on their annual run north is I high speed troll over the deep edge of the reef for Bonita. And that's the Billy Bait Mini Turbo Slammer. And the final lure we're gonna go over for topwater trolling is an Islander. The Islander is a world-renowned trolling lure. Ultra popular, catches big pelagic game fish. This thing catches dolphin, it catches marlin, it'll catch wahoo, it'll catch kingfish, Bonita, tuna, all the big pelagics that you can have fun sport fishing, recreational fishing, deep sea fishing, anything that you can think of while you're trolling, this tool will get it done. I troll it between eight and 10 knots. Gets that bite, gets those fish frenzied up and entices the impulse to feed. You also have the option when using an Islander to troll fresh bait behind it, such as a strip or a ballyhoo. That works just as good, but you'll want to slow your speed down, you know, to between six and eight knots if you've got fresh bait on. You don't want that bait to wash out and be ineffective and actually turn fish away. Now, when I'm trolling an Islander and I initially set it up, what I do is I've got it hooked up on double 80 tandem hook setup with a one and a half ounce egg sinker to provide a spacing between the head and the hooks so that my hook dangles out right at the tail end where fish comes and nips it off. Predators attack the tail first, disable the prey fish, and come back around and attack it. If you've got your hook right there, that doesn't give them that second chance to come back around, engulf the whole thing, and possibly bite off at the monofilament leader and leave you with nothing. So normally when I am trolling this lure, I've got it on 60 pound monofilament. It is crimped on both ends, the hook and the mainline attachment end. As I said, once I go above 50 pound test, I use crimps. Now you can also troll this with wire leader if you want to, if you're going for toothy critters. That's what you're targeting. Islanders come in all sorts of colors. The blue and white one is my favorite for top water trolling. Now I do select other colors for other types of trolling such as high speed trolling for Wahoo. But if I'm up on top, I'm going with blue and white. And that's the Islander trolling lure. Next, we're gonna get into the area of planer trolling. This is a planer. What this does is this gets your bait down below the surface to fish the water column anywhere from five to 50 feet down while you're trolling. 
My go-to lure for when it comes to planer trolling is the strip bait lure, also known as a planer trolling lure. What it is, is it's a sea witch of your choice, any color, trailed by a trolling skirt or a squirt squid, hooked on with either a large single hook or a double hook tandem setup. This double hook tandem setup is so that you control a strip bait. The most effective strip bait is the Bonita strip. However, you're not limited. You can use mullet strips, you can use barracuda strips, you can use dolphin strips, whatever it may be. It all adds a little bit of flavor right behind your lure to sort of entice that impulse to feed also. You're gonna be trolling six to eight knots with a planer. Again, we are enticing the impulse to feed. We are not giving fish time to swim up and examine our bait. We are making fish chase our lure down. This is what you do it with. So typically, you're going after fish with teeth, like kingfish and wahoo when you're trolling these lures. You're gonna to wanna to use wire leader. I have about 16 to 18 inches of wire leader on there. I usually use 40 pound test number four wire for these. I don't go real thick. I like a more stealthy approach when it comes to using wire leader. Strip bait lures typically aren't made in bait shops or mass sold. You have to make them. They can be made in smaller tackle shops where guys come in and they're looking for that stuff all the time. However, typically you make your own, which makes the color choices endless. My color choice typically to start out with since I am most of the time in green water is this one. It's a dolphin colored trolling skirt, which is blue, chartreuse and white with a blue and white fabric sea witch on it. Then I'll put a bonita strip behind it, troll around, see if I can get the kingfish bite. I try to keep the color of the sea witch topical with the color of the trailing lure. So if I have a dolphin colored squirt squid, I more than likely put a greener, bluer colored sea witch on top of it. If I have a pink and yellow squirt squid, I'll keep a like a pink iridescent sea witch on top of it. The hooks that I use are topical for a larger profile strip bait lure. I'll use double eight o tandem hook setup. For the smaller profile, I'll go with two five o's. And again, same with the strip bait. Larger lure, I'm gonna use a larger bait. Smaller lure, I can go with a smaller strip. So strip bait lures catch all sorts of fish. Mainly, they're used for king fishing. However, you do catch bonita, you catch tuna, you'll catch wahoo on that. Every once in a while, a sailfish will go after him, and then it's super fun because you're planer trolling, and the end action of planer trolling usually is hand lining in your 100 foot leader that's attached to your planer. And that's the strip bait lure for you. My go to lure, ultra effective, ultra popular here off the southeast coast of Florida. Another popular lure for trolling off the backside of a planer is the drone spin. It's a high attractant for toothy critters such as kingfish, barracuda, wahoo. When you're using a drone spoon, I highly recommend using wire leader. When you're using a drone spoon, you're gonna to wanna to use a barrel swivel to attach it to your wire leader because as it's going through the water, it's spinning, acting erratic. So you wanna have it so that it is on a barrel swivel and it can spin around, twist around, without winding up your leader and making it get all sorts of line twists and stuff as you're winding it in and letting it back out or pulling in your fish. You can troll a drone spoon between six and eight knots. It can also be used as a top water lure. You can actually tell the action of it because your rod tip will be bouncing back and forth. And it does great catches the same things up on top as it does with the planer. However, I find it more effective when being trolled down in the water column on a planer. That's the drone spin. Now let's say you do want to fish the water column, yet you're not into planer trolling and all the setup that goes behind, letting out the lure, 
letting out the leader, setting the planer, and the whole setup. You can always use a deep diving lure such as this. This is a Rapala Magnum in the dolphin color. What this does is this dives down 35 feet when you troll it six to eight knots. You're gonna need a bigger setup rod for it because it's gonna put a lot of pressure on it. It's gonna bend your rod over. So, you know, a heavier conventional to a medium conventional setup is what you're gonna need. You're not gonna to wanna to troll this with a big spinner. This lure is fairly dangerous. It has two treble hooks on it. So it's gonna make a messier fish. Just be careful when you get them up to the boat that you don't get pegged by it. It fishes down in the water column. It'll get dolphin, it'll get wahoo, it'll get kingfish many species like i said if you don't feel like going through and setting up a planer and letting it out you can just hook one of these up right to your snap swivel and let it out and get down in the water column if you're way offshore and nothing's hitting up on top or you want to start out also with something down to fish in the water column yet you don't want to go through planer trolling and getting it all set up like that you just hook one of these on and see if something's down there. That's the Rapala Magnum 35 foot diver. And the last type of trolling that I want to cover for the trolling lure selection is high speed trolling. High speed trolling is usually done for targeting two fish. It's done for targeting Wahoo and Marlin. And this is your typical setup for a high speed trolling lure. What it is, is it's an Islander lure trailed by a 12 inch squirt squid with a two ounce weight in the head followed by some spacers and two 11 -0 hooks. Typically you want to use wire leader or cable on these leaders. If you're using cable you're going to want to crimp it. If you're using wire leaders you're going to want to use haywire twists, haywire twist tool, make sure it's good and set up to go. These lures are usually darker in color because when you're high speed trolling for Wahoo, you use darker color setup because you want to be in lower light levels. The typical setup is the Islander, the trolling skirt and the hooks. You can also purchase hooks made in a double tandem setup from the store where they're heat shrinked and they're cable wrapped together and they're sort of stiffer than just a double hooks tandem setup that you have crimped together using the eye of your hooks. High speed trolling, you're gonna wanna be going between 14 and 18 knots. The fish are gonna chase you down. Wahoo and Marlin are some of the fastest fish in the ocean. You are not going to outrun them. I typically tend to use three to four feet of 270 pound cable crimped onto these lures. When the Wahoo comes up and tags it, it's a violent bite. He twists around and he flops around and everything. If you're using wire leader and all those twists happen, your wire leader can get twisted up and get in a kink and break off cable is not going to do that. The high speed trolling lures come in all sorts of colors. You can buy these pre-made from major retail tackle stores such as West Marine. You can also buy them from smaller locally owned tackle shops and they're more custom made. Those guys hear what's working. They're fishermen themselves. You look at what they've got made on the shelves and it's more than likely what they think is going to work or what they have personal experience that is working. Like I said, they come in all sorts of colors. My favorites to use for these creatures such as Wahoo and Marlin are darker colors such as purples and blacks, or I'll use pinks and yellows. They're highly effective too. If you are going out with the intention of hunting down Marlin, you might want to replace the cable with a heavier monofilament leader. More than likely a 150 pound test, a stiff monofilament leader. And again, you're gonna to wanna to crimp that and not tie a knot in it. Add some stealth factor to your lure instead of having you know, a visible cable attached to it. So if you are trolling a high speed lure like this, it's not very heavy, it will stay up on top and it will skip out of the water. What you're gonna need 
is trolling weight behind it. You're going to need 32 to 48 ounces of trolling weight. This one is hooked up with cable on both ends. What that does is that prevents a cutoff because every once in a while you'll get a wahoo that will come up and it will actually strike the trolling weight. You don't want to lose everything. This setup is not cheap so you'll want to protect your investment by using the proper attachments which is cable or wire leader. What this trolling weight does is it keeps your whole setup and your lure just below the surface when you're doing 18 knots. And that's the high speed trolling lure. Another great lure for high speed trolling is the Yozuri Bonita. Highly effective, highly popular. This lure you do not need a trolling weight in front of. You just take it, drop it in the water, get up the speed and zoom around with it. This one is my favorite color. It came out this past year. It, it, it's new. It's got a little bit of texture on it. It's purple and it's red on top. It sort of changes colors. If you look at it from this way, it's black. If you look at it from the back side, it's red, it's purple. Like I said, it's got a little texture on it. It's got two 9-0 hooks on it, both on barrel swivels so that they will spin around without making the lure act erratic. This lure swims in the water at high speed. So when you're looking at it, it's always doing like this, swimming, going up and down a little bit, but it's always swimming. If you troll it right, the hooks will not get hooked up underneath it and go on top like this. If you slow your boat down and you let the lure start to sink, the possibility of the lure getting hooked up on top of your lure or the two hooks getting hooked together is possible. If that happens, your rod's going to act funny while you're trolling and it's going to swim up on top like flat. So you will know, and then you'll have to reel it in and reset it and unhook it. Yozuri Bonita is ultra effective. Again, this will catch Wahoo and Marlin. Sometimes you'll even get a tuna to come up, a big tuna to come up and eat this bad boy. That's the Yozuri Bonita. All right, folks, that about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned a little bit about the process of lure selection when it comes to decision making about how you're going to troll, what you're going to use, and what you're going to catch with them. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.